Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to an A-level micro video looking at some of the aspects of the economics of deforestation. So in this video, we'll look at some of the main drivers of increased rates of deforestation in countries such as Brazil and Indonesia. Deforestation causes significant economic and social human costs, and this is now one of the most critical environmental issues of the age. We will briefly touch in this video on some of the policy options open perhaps to addressing the challenging uh, current rates of deforestation and also mention the work of the economics Nobel winning economist, the late and the great Eleanor Ostrom. So here's a chart showing deforestation in Brazil, estimated deforestation in terms of square kilometres between August 2017 and August 2018 approximately just under 8,000 square kilometres of rainforest was destroyed. In rough terms, that's an area probably about five times the size of London. The progress made by Brazil over a decade ago now in making substantial cuts to deforestation appears to have gone in reverse, in part because of the election of President Bolsonaro, uh, who was elected in 2018. He's the leader of the right-wing Social Liberal Party, and uh, he's sometimes known as the Trump of the tropics. His attitude to deforestation has been marked a change in policy. One of the key drivers of deforestation in Brazil has been the huge increase in the scale of industrial farming. Brazil is now both the world's biggest beef exporter and also the largest soy producer. But you know, that's clearly had consequences in terms of forest clearance, to encourage industrial farming has that favoured development over long run conservation. There's no single cause of deforestation. That's a key point to make in any essay. But here are six. The expansion of industrial cattle and soy farming in Brazil. Expansion of often illegal gold mining has been a major factor. So too the, the, the growing use of hydroelectric dams as a source of energy. If you like the natural uh, process of urban development and urban sprawl which impacts on on forest and illegal logging and land grabbing so the bulk of logging in brazil is illegal by some estimates 80 percent of logging is illegal and land grabbing is in part caused by the the absence of property rights there's a big uh, blur a hazy line between uh, you know who owns the land and that can often result in local people indigenous groups effectively being forced off their land and becoming impoverished. And fundamentally, I think this, this issue, this challenge, this major problem is the result of the weakening, the softening of legal and institutional protections. Property rights have not been enforced properly. Just under, uh, just over a fifth of the total forest cover in Brazil has now been removed, as this graphic shows. And the total area has fallen just to over 3.3 million square kilometres. And clearly this is going to have significant consequences. Another aspect of this from an economics point of view is the economic and social impact, the consequences of deforestation. The Amazon in particular is a resource of extraordinary richness as a, as a source of natural capital. But there are now enormous threats to the value of what lies beneath the ground in Brazil and other countries. Uh, so so there's clearly a threat to the livelihoods of millions of indigenous populations by some estimates. Over 30 million people live in the Amazon region. Uh, there's over 380 indigenous groups. They're clearly a big threat to their survival and their rural economy. There's environmental impact, the loss of a vital carbon store, threats to ecosystems, uh, the loss of biodiversity of tree species, the loss of habitat for wildlife, uh, greater soil drying as there's less shading material, increased flooding is another consequence of deforestation. So huge consequences to the ecosystems and also consequences for water supplies, not just in Brazil, but in many other countries, um, particularly in terms of the impact on, on you know, climate change. Overall, of course, deforestation represents an enormous threat to the potential that countries have to achieve sustainable and inclusive development. So it's a major issue. What can be done about it? Well, in this short video, we're not going to go through every single policy let me pick out one or two policy options that you might want to research and explore in more detail. One is to link 
the aid program of rich advanced countries towards uh, deforestation um, programs. So you could, for example, offer husbandry payments to local farmers to look after the forest, to, to reduce the rate at which forest is depleted. And that could you said that linking aid effectively to husbandry payments. Another could be to invest to make farming more sustainable, using appropriate capital inputs, for example, to improve irrigation and what have you, to try to just make the industrial farming a little bit more sustainable and inclusive. Some countries are now looking to link trade agreements to improved environmental farming policies. So um, basically saying if you want to access your home markets, so the rich nation markets, then you have to strengthen your environmental protection. Technology could also be a, a factor here, but in particular using the latest satellite technology to measure and monitor and track how quickly deforestation is happening. And, you know, investment, putting, putting money, dollars, euros and pounds in reforestation programmes. Many governments are already doing that. Ethiopia is a good example recently. The Ecosia search engine, of course, could be an individual initiative uh, to, to help at the margins. Loads of value judgments here about which policy options might be most effective, most efficient and most equitable over time. A couple of articles here from the FT. Uh, one arguing that trade deals could combat deforestation. This is making the synoptic link between a trade deal, access to rich country markets, for example, and making uh, decisive improvements to environmental policies. And a recent article saying Brazil tells rich countries to pay up to protect the Amazon. They're looking for significant funding for, for rural areas to help uh, give them an incentive to cut down on deforestation. My fundamental point would be that the key in the long run to controlling it is probably to show emphatically that the conservation of land can be both economically profitable and environmentally valuable to the communities most connected most connected often by many generations to the land. There are lots of economic concepts that you might want to bring into in any, any essay or daily response question on deforestation. So the opportunity cost of using land in different ways, the importance of property rights in determining who owns land and who can, or how land can be protected by the legal system, the externalities of both production and consumption arising from, uh, for example, the increased global demand for products made using soya. Sustainable growth, of course, is a huge topic. Likewise, the whole role of the incentive and the profit motive in shaping the decisions that producers take. And two types of capital, natural capital, the value of the land and the environmental resources that countries, uh, that, that they have. And social capital is really important in the debate. Social capital is about the bonds between communities, within, within communities, between people how communities and organisations and countries can make decisions in a sort of collective way um, for the betterment of a community in the long term. Eleanor Ostrom is the only woman so far to have won the Nobel Prize in Economics. She sadly died a few years ago, a brilliant political scientist based in the States, but she did a lot of groundwork in the field in, in India, in the lobster fisheries of Maine, in the, in the, in the um, Alpine commons of Italy. And she made an absolutely huge contribution to our understanding of how to overcome the tragedy of the commons, where open access resources such as grazing land and forestry, for example, tend to be overused and over extracted. And her view, her, her work emphasised the importance of bottom up self governance within communities, norms developed within societies of proper conduct, voluntarily mutually agreed rules of behaviour and penalties for non-compliance. Oftentimes the solutions to deforestation and other issues can come from the bottom up at community level because those people in the field, if you like, in the Amazon have a much deeper knowledge than any policymaker. Strongly recommend if you get a chance to go to the Globe and Mail article, a video journal from 2018 called The Road. Uh, Travelling along highway BR163, absolutely remarkable story of powerful agro-food multinationals, the battle against deforestation and mining, communities attempting to build resilience and the challenge of over overcoming what is often overpowering 
corruption. It's a fantastic photo essay and I really strongly recommend you into Google you type The Road, the Global Mail from 2018. Terrific resource. And perhaps finally consider downloading Ecosia as an alternative search engine to help raise money from every search to fund to fund reforestation projects. Okay, thanks for joining in this video on the economics of deforestation.